Magandang maga po sa ating lahat. Tayo po tayo. Another Sunday na binigay sa atin ng Lord. Another day to worship Him, to gather, to fellowship, and to enjoy yung presence ng Lord. We will start this service by singing songs sa ating Panginoon. Kapangyari Haring kataas-taasan Sa aking puso ay nananahan Pagpapalamot, pagsama Ay laging nararanasan Kailan may hindi mag-isa So I na 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 ha Pagpapalabot pagsama ay laging nararanasan kailan may hindi mag-iisa Ako mo sa akin hindi ako iiwan sa bawat sandali Sasamahan, banal na spirito, hatid ay kalakasan Upang lahat ng bagay ay mapatagumpayan Diyos na makapangyarihan, haring kataas-taasan sa aking puso Bawat sandali ay laging sasamahan Banal na spirito, hatid ay kalakasan Upang lahat ng bagay ay mapatabumpayan Diyos na makapangyarihan, haring kataas-taasan sa aking puso ay nananahan Pagpapalamot, pagsama Ay laging nararanasan Kailan may hindi Kailan may hindi Kailan may hindi Mag-iisa Pag-ibig mo, o Diyos sa buhay kong ito Ang kagalakan mo'y kalakasan ko Ikaw ang nais ko Ikaw lamang ang pupurihin Ang pangalan mo'y dadakilain Wala na sa'yo'y maihahambig Ang awit ko'y iyong dindig Sukoy sumisila kapag sa yoy sumasam lagi kang naging nadarama sa tuwing kapiling ka ang puso ko sumisila kapag sa yoy sumasam ba? Sa buhay ko ito Ang kagalakan mo ay kalakasan ko Ikaw ang nais ko Ikaw lamang ang pupulihin Ang pangalan mo'y dadakilain Wala na 
sa'yo'y maihahambig Ang awit ko'y iyong bingin Sabay-sabay nating kata ng Panginoon Langit ang aking nadaraman Sa tuwing tapirin ka Ang puso ko'y sumisigla Kapag sa'yo'y sumasa Langit ang aking nadaraman Sa tuwing kapilin ka Ang puso ko'y sumisigla Kapag sa'yo'y sumasamba Sa'yo'y maihahambig Ang awit ko'y iyong dinggin Langit ang aking nagdarama Sa tuwing kapiling ka Ang puso ko'y sumisigla Kapag sa'yo'y sumasa Langit ang aking nagdarama Sa tuwing kapiling ka Ang puso ko'y Sumisigla Kapag sa'yo'y sumasa Langit ang aking nadarama Sa tuwing kapiling ka Ang puso ko'y sumisigla Kapag sa'yo'y sumasa Langit ang aking nadarama Sa tuwing kapiling ka Ang puso ko'y sumisigla Pinakita ng Diyos sa atin ang kanyang pag-ibig na kahit tayo ay makasalanan makasalanan pa na matay si Kristo para sa atin
kayang tumbasan O Diyos ng katarungan At katuwinan na kahit minsan Di na bahiran ang kabanal at kalwalhatian Salamat sa sutulang biyaya mo O Diyos ng pag-ibig na mas malawak pa kaysa aking mga pagkakasala higit pa sa buhay ko salamat sa sumulang bihaya ko Niyakap mo ako sa aking karumihan Inibig mo ako ng di kayang tumbasan O Diyos ng katarungan at katuwiran na kahit minsan di na bahiran ang kabanay at kalwalhatian Salamat sa sundulang biyaya mo O Diyos ng pag-ibig na mas malawak pa kaysa aking mga pagkakasala Higit pa sa buhay ko, salamat sa sundulang biyaya mo. Siyang naging buhay na mamangha sa iyong tunay Ang puso ko'y mag-aalay Na pagsambang huwagas, itataas 
Lakas buong puso Isipan at lakas Ay tanggapin o Diyos At kalugdan Habang nabubuhay Ika'y aking hahandugan Ang pagsambang wagas Itataas buong puso Isipan at lakas Pagkat ako'y umiibig sa'yo Kalwalhatian mo Ang buhay ko'y pagsambang wagas Itataas buong puso Isipan at lakas Ay tanggapin o Diyos At kalugdan Habang nabubuhay Ika'y aking hahandugan Ang pagsambang wagas Itataas buong puso Isipan at lakas Pagkat ako'y umiibig sa'yo Kalwalhatian mo Ang saysay ng buhay ko aming buhay, ang aming puso, ang aming isip, Panginoon, maging pagsambang wagas para sa iyo, Diyos. Ama naming nasa langit, tunay po na sukdulan ang biyaya na ipinagkuloob niyo sa amin sa pamamagitan ng inyong buktong na anak na si Jesus, ang aming tagapagligtas. Itinataas namin ang inyong ngalan. Kayo ay higit sa lahat banal at walang katulad sa inyo. Patawarin niyo po kami sa aming mga kasalanan, ang aming mga naisip na sabi at nagawa na hindi nakakalugod sa inyo. Patawarin niyo na wa kami sa aming mga hindi naman namin nagawa na dapat at inutos ninyo sa amin. Kung hindi man namin maisip ang aming mga pagkakamali at pagkukulang, nawa ay tulungan niyo kami o banal na His Spirit upang sa gayon ay aming mapagsisihan at matalikuran ang mga ito. At kami ay tuluyang magsilbi sa inyo at sa aming mga kapwa ng buong puso at may gagalakan. Puspusin niyo po kami ng inyong Espiritu, Panginoon. Hubugin niyo po kami sa kawangis ng inyong anak na si Jesus. Kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyong biyaya at grasya araw-araw. Sa kahabaan ng inyong pasensya sa amin, sa inyong hinahon, sa pakikitungo sa amin na inyong mga anak, Panginoon. Sa kabila ng aming kakulangan, ay nariyan pa rin kayo na nagbibigay ng pisikal na pangangailangan. At bukod pa roon, ay ginawa ninyong libre ang buhay na walang hanggan na matatagbuan sa Panginoong Heso Kristo. Ngayon ay naisin nating ipabatid sa ating Panginoon ang ating personal na pangangailangan. Maaring ito ay ukol sa inyong pisikal na nararamdaman o pangangailangan, karamdaman sa katawan, damdamin, mga sira o pasira pa lang na relasyon sa inyong mga trabaho at hanap buhay, o mismo sa ating eklesia o iglesia. Ilapag natin itong lahat sa Panginoon 
ngayong panandalian. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa pagdinig nyo sa aming mga hiling at iyak. Mangyari nawa ang inyong kalooban. Panginoon, nilalapit namin sa inyo ang aming bansa, ang mga leader dito, simula sa aming presidente hanggang sa mga newly elected officials na mga kagawad, Panginoon. Pati na rin ang mga kawani ng gobyerno. Ipakita mo ang inyong karakter sa kanila. Makilala nawa nila kayo sa mga mananampalatayang kawani. Tulungan niyo po sila maging mabuting impluensya sa kapwa. At bigyan sila nawa ng lakas ng loob na magbigay testimonya sa inyo at ikalat ng inyong salita at ebanghelyo. Aming ipinagdarasal rin ang mga ligaw na tupa ninyo. Panginoon. Ang mga hindi pa nakakilala sa inyo na itinakda ninyo na makakilala sa inyo. Nawa ay gamitin nyo ang simbang ito upang marami ang makarinig at marami ang maligtas sa pangalawang kamatayan na walang hanggan. Panginoon, inilalapit rin po namin sa inyo ang Israel at Palestine na ngayon nga po ay may gyera at marami na ang nasawi dahil rito. Kumihingi po kami ng proteksyon para sa inyong mga tao doon na nasa Israel at Palestine. Ingatan niyo po sila. Sabi nga po ninyo na ang mga ito ay mangyayari muna bago ang inyong pagbabalik. Wars, famine, and great earthquakes nawa Panginoon sa pagbabalik ninyo ay matagpuan nyo kami na tapat at nananampalataya sa inyo Panginoon nilalapit rin po namin sa inyong aming simbahan at ang mga miyembro nito puspusin nyo ng banal na espiritu ang bawat isa hiling po namin na pagalingin nyo po ang may mga sakit punuin nyo po ng magagandang salita na nakakalakas ng kapatiran ang aming mga labi. Bigyan niyo po kami ng puso na puno ng pagmamahal sa kapwa na may isip na gusto naming paglingkuran ng isa't isa tulad ng itinuro niyo sa amin aming tagapagligtas. Aming isabuhay na wa ang inyong salita na naririnig namin araw-araw, linggo-linggo. Pati na rin, Panginoon, inilalapit po namin sa inyo ang mga tinalaga ninyong mamuno sa simbang ito at lahat ng mga nagsisilbi rito. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa kanilang buhay. Kayo po ang pumuno ng kanilang pangangailangan. Patuloy niyo pong ibigay ang inyong biyayas sa kanila. Nakagalakan ng puso sa inyo at mas malalim pa na pagkikilala sa inyo. Nawa po ay gamitin ninyo ang aming lingkod, ang inyong lingkod na si Pastor Boyet upang mas makilala pa kayo ng lubos ng bawat makakarinig ng inyong salita ngayong araw. Lahat ng pangangailangan ng kanyang pamilya ay ipagkaloob niyo po, Panginoon. Pinapanalangin po namin ang mga makakakinig ng inyong salita ngayong araw na ay maging epektibo ito sa puso at isipan ng bawat isa. Ito ang aming hiling at dasal. 
sa ngalan ng aming tapagbigtas. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's a joy and a blessing to see you all. And uh, today is Communion Sunday. So those watching online, I hope that you have prepared the table elements so that you can participate as we observe the Lord's table right after the preaching. And please continue to pray for our church's 14th anniversary. Dalawang linggo na lang po mula ngayon. At ito po ay on November 26, we'll have a simple celebration, we'll have lunch, and then we have a small activity sa in the afternoon. And uh, as requested by the committee in charge, I please fill out the survey form you know, uh, by using the QR code at the back of your program. And uh, also, the survey, the survey form will also be posted on our Kumustahan and uh, women's uh, group chat page. Okay? Uh, whether you attend or not, please uh, fill out the survey form. At kung mapapansin niyo po, ay uh, nagsimula tayo itong November, nakatapos lang natin ang pag-aaral natin ng Exodo. At uh, hanggang sa atin pong anniversary, ay meron tayong short series on the parables. Okay? A picture is worth a thousand words. Therefore, teachers look hard for ways to help their students, their listeners, connect with what they are teaching. And Jesus is the best illustrator of all time. He uses analogies you know, where you compare two things that are similar but different. Christ is a rock. You know, he uses similes such as the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. And metaphors, the teaching of God is a fountain of life. But his most popular tool is the Parable. It's a practical story designed to illustrate a spiritual truth. Last week, we examined the parable of the soils. In that parable, Jesus helps us to understand that we can present the message of the gospel to different people, and these people will also respond differently depending on the way their hearts receive the message. Now, in our passage, it's the parable of the wheat and the tares, or the parable of the wheat and the weeds. Jesus adds another dimension to understanding the work of sharing the gospel message. And so, in this parable, Jesus tells us that we need to be aware, brethren, as we sow the seed of the gospel, we will uh, not only have to deal with different soils, but also, we will face an opposition. Kaya nga po, uh, yung, yung angulo na yon ang lalagyan ko ng diin. And ano po bang mga truths ang atin pong uh, matututunan ngayong umaga dito po sa parable of the wheat and the tares. But before we continue, may I request everyone to please rise as we read our passage found in Matthew 13, 24 to 30, and 36 to 43. But we will read verses 24 to 30 only. Those watching online, please follow along as we read the text. Altogether, Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and left. And when the wheat sprouted and produced grain, then the weeds also became evident. And the slaves of the landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy had done this. The slaves said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, while you are gathering up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather up the weeds and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. 
This is God's holy, inspired, and inerrant word. Please be seated. All people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, and we thank you, O God, for the spiritual truth conveyed in, this, uh, in your word. We know that it is meant to be profitable for our correction, for our instruction in righteousness. So by the Spirit, Lord, make it so. We ask as well that you would enlighten us of our own need for forgiveness of sin, even as we study your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen and amen. The parable is straightforward. A man sows seed in his field. While the owner and the servants or the workers sleep, the enemy sows seed in with the good seed. This was a practice some used to destroy their enemies. The weeds and the seed grow together, and when the weeds are discovered, the workers want to go and pull them out. But the owner, realizing that the, the roots of the weed intertwine with the roots of the wheat, and so he asks his workers to wait until the harvest because it is easier for them to separate the weeds and the wheat. And the weeds will be gathered together and used for fuel for the fire. Now, what are the truths that we can learn from this parable? First, we must recognize that Satan is real and at work. In verses 37 to 39, part of the passage, in explaining this parable, Jesus tells us that, and he said, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. And the field is the world. And as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom. And the weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are angels. When a person accepts Jesus as his Savior and Lord, he crosses from the realm of darkness to the realm of light. He enters a spiritual war. That includes angels and demons battling over the souls of men. Sadly, many Christians live without any real awareness of this spiritual battle and therefore are losing it. The Bible reminds us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Brethren, we must recognize Satan is real. Satan is rude, and he has done a great job uh, getting us to overlook him. Satan is powerful. In fact, after God, Satan is probably the most powerful being in the universe. He commands one-third of the created angels, which are now demons. He is the ruler of this world, this present time, who is committed to perverting God's creation and subverting God's plans. You know, his great power is demonstrated in the fact that Michael, the archangel, would not even rebuke him. In Jude 1, but Michael, the archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him an abusive judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Jude chapter 1. Now, this implies that Satan is at least equal in power to Michael, the archangel, or even greater than him. Now, the problem here is that we miss this idea. We dismiss this idea of spiritual battle because we cannot see it taking place. Many people give, don't give serious consideration to Satan because uh, they see him just as a cartoon character with horns and a pitchfork who looks sinister but harmless. No, hindi po nila pinapansin itong demonyo sapagkat ginagamit lang daw to ng iba para ma-excuse ang kanilang evil behaviors. No, they blame the demon of smoking, the demon of addiction, the demon of uh, road rage, the demon of drinking, the demon of gluten gluttony. 
No, the demon of anger, of rage, of, of uh, bitterness, and, and, and more. And so it, is, it seems so silly that we overlook the devil. Doing so is a mis serious mistake. Alam niyo si Satanas, he will grind away at the weaknesses in our character. If your weakness is lost, he will continue to tempt you with impure thoughts and opportunities to feed the last within you. If your weakness is covetousness or envy, he will continue to point out the things that others have that you deserve. If your weakness is an unforgiving spirit, he will continue to remind you of the pain, of the hurt that someone has caused you again and again and again. And if your weakness is being rigid or legalistic, he will hamper, hamper your ministry for the Lord by piling uh, rules and regulations. The devil will exploit your weakness. He will replay all your failures. He will tell you that God would not love someone like you. He will seek to rob you of your joy and diminish your fellowship with him. And so as you seek to live for the Lord, the devil is going to actively derail you. And if you want to share the gospel with others, the devil is going to try to prostrate all your attempts. Because the devil opposes God, he opposes God's people, and therefore, he will keep unbelievers from coming to God. So the devil is real. Now, the second principle is that we must realize that Satan's principal scheme is to counterfeit that which is good. Bakit hindi po na-notice ng mga workers na meron ng damo doon sa field? Hindi po ba? Now, alam po natin, even with uh, modern herbicides, ay problema pa rin to mga weeds. But during that time, familiar na familiar yung mga nakikinig kay Jesus. Because merong isang species na tinatawag the bearded uh, darnel. No? It, it begins to grow, my friends, uh, as this begins to grow, it looks very similar to the wheat. Only when the wheat reaches maturity and develop its head, dun lang madidiscern yung mga damo, yung mga weeds. Kaya sabi ng owner, hintayin natin yung harvest because it is easier no, para ma-separate yung weed at saka wheat. Remember, kapag nag-mature na yung wheat, dun pa lamang makikita yung difference. Now, the problem with that weed is that it is prone to mold infection. So that when it is mixed with the weed, it will contaminate the food supply and endanger yung mga kakain ng wheat. Now, the Bible tells us that Satan loves to masquerade as an angel of light. In other words, he loves to pretend to be something that he is not. And he loves to plant those in the world, my friends, who look like the real one. To lead others astray. The Bible warns us of false Christ, of false apostles, of false uh, ministers, of false gospel, of false this, the doctrine, of false prophets. Christ taught that in the last days, false prophets would increase in number and lead many people away from God. In Matthew 24, 11, and many false prophets will rise up and mislead many people. Kailan po ba nagsimula yung last days? At Christ's death and will continue until the second coming of Christ. False prophets have come and will continue to increase in number. Look around at the false religions around us. They all sound pretty good. They use spiritual language. They talk about love. They proclaim that they, we are their brothers and sisters. But their motive, they are just seeking to um, lead us away from Christ. You see, Satan is a good counterfeiter. He is able to produce people 
who look very much like the believer. Just because people are part of the local church, listen, just because people are part of the local church doesn't necessarily mean that you are, that they are true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. In every local church, there are weeds amongst the wheat. Ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, lahat ng local Christian church, kahit ang GCF Northeast, hindi po lahat tunay na mananampalataya. And therefore, yung ibig sabihin po, it is easy to be led astray just because someone claims to be a Christian, he looks and acts and sounds like a Christian, it doesn't mean that we should blindly follow that person. No, Ito pong mga pinadala ni Satanas, tinanim ni Satanas at local church, they often come in popular evangelical clothing. Maaring nang galing sila sa mga kilalang mga seminaryo. They use orthodox lingo like gospel, like uh, kingdom living, kingdom character, or even trinity, and it even appear godly. They often know scripture so well. But tandaan din po natin, ang demonyo, when he tempted Christ, he used his scripture. And they may have great Christian experiences. Remember in seven, Matthew 7, 22, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform miracles? Di po ba nakita niyo po, ito ay nandudoon sa church and on that judgment day, ay kanila pong sinasabi sa harapan ng marami, Lord, Lord, pero ang ginawa ni Jesus? Wala, hindi sila tinanggap. My friends, their outward persona doesn't match the inward one. They are ferocious wolves who will hurt the flock. So how do we recognize the counterfeits? If we are going to stand firm in a world of false teaching, we are to be well grounded in the truth. We need to examine everything we are taught against the unchanging word of God. The only way that you can be certain that what you are taught is right is to check it out yourself. Kaya nga po, lagi dito naririnig niyo sa, pul sa pulpit, ang mga leaders, laging ini-emphasize, you read and study and know scripture. That's why we encourage you to attend growth groups, you attend fellowships na nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. It is the only way to ensure that you are not being led astray. That's why we encourage you to read, study the Word of God. Do you know why churchgoers are being seduced by uh, Eastern religions and New Age cults? It is because they don't know what Christians believe. If these people just understood that we believe, we Christians believe that God was uniquely God in the flesh, then they would recognize the deception when someone tells them that Jesus is only a man or that Jesus is only a God. If these people understood that Jesus said that the only way to heaven is through faith in him, then they would easily recognize, they would easily understand that those who claim that there are many ways, that Jesus is, the, is, is just one way to heaven, maintindihan nila na alam nila mali yun. If they, will just, uh, if they just understood that the Bible's declaration that all have seen and come short of the glory of God, then they would recognize easily that when someone tells the, to, 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 told them that all people are basically good, alam kagad nila na mali yun. Alam ng bawat isa sa atin, kung tayo tunay na nagbabasa, nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos, hindi po tayo may influence ng maling katuruan. But we can be sure that any good work will have its counterfeit. And the only way to recognize the counterfeit is to be well acquainted with the real one. So, Pastor, paano? Again, through deeply studying and knowing Scripture. 
Now, Scripture describes those who are commonly led astray by false teachers and false doctrine as spiritual children. In Ephesians 4.14, as a result, we, no, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of people, by craftiness in deceitful scheming. The spiritual child is a dangerous state of life because like regular children, spiritual children lack wisdom and commonly endanger themselves because of it. And this can lead them to various false doctrines that stay with them throughout their lives and potentially, and there is that potential that they will be misled. Nakuha niyo po, dahil hindi po lubos na naunawaan natin ang salita ng Diyos, napakadali na mag-adapt, mag, nasabi lang ng isang pastor na ganito, tinatanggap na natin agad. At yung tinanggap natin yan because of our immaturity, dala-dala natin hanggang tayo po ay nagiging spiritual adult. Pero hindi po natin alam, doon tayo napapasukan at hindi natin na, na natitikman the full blessing, the full favor of God. When Paul warned the Ephesian elders that some of them would become wolves that taught false doctrine, he closed that teaching with this. In Acts chapter 20, verses 31 to 32, Therefore be on the alert, remembering that night and day for a period of three years, I did not cease to admonish each one with tears. And now I entrust you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Let us remember that whatever we learn in our early childhood often stays with us. And the same is true with spiritual adults. Many of us have corrupt ideas of doctrine, wrong ideas of doctrine that are very hard to root out because they were planted during our spiritual childhood. Ano po kaya ang mga spiritual things na natutunan natin pero mali? nako-compromise ang truth. God's word will protect us as we study it deeply. Are you aiming to study the word of God deeply? Again, I want to invite you to attend growth groups, fellowships, dito sa church. Magpa-disciple po kayo. Magpa-mentor po kayo. I'm glad sa men's mag-start na kami kasi meron na mga forms na binigay kay Brother Bob and mag-start na ang men's ministry na mag-disciple. I'm sure ang mga kababaihan natin ay meron na rin. Ano po, na ganun. Pero kung wala pa po kayong uh, mga disciples, please approach Brother Bob and Brother Moy. Brother Bob, just raise your hand. Please approach Brother Bob or Brother Moy at uh, magpalista po kayo. Now, lastly, we must remain calm. Diba? The owner of the field knows there are weeds in his field. Alam niya. He knows that those weeds would, uh, could, could poison others when it's mixed with the wheat. But he also knows the inappropriate action will do more harm than good. Diba? Sabi ng mga, mga workers sa kanya, Boss, andun may mga damo. Doon sa field, ano sabi niya? Hindi ito ang tamang panahon. Pagdating na lang ng harvest. What does that mean? Consider the history of the church. When the church tried to force obedience and morality, as in the Crusades, as in the Inquisition, the, the Salem witch trials, it has hurt the cause of the church, the cause of Christ. It has done great damage to that which is good. Ano nakita ng mga tao? They saw anger 
rather than love. They show aggressiveness rather than humility. They show harshness rather than gentleness. So when we try to do things on our own, we rush into trouble and hurt the name of Christ. Now, Pastor, is this parable teaching us that we are to stand on the sidelines and say nothing when we see perversion of truth and see moral standards eroding? I don't think so. But I think there is, it, it gives us an important lesson. As we withstand evil, we must do so appropriately. And in principle, we must take a stand against immoral behaviors, but we must be discerning without being judgmental. We shouldn't be quick to judge others. You see, it is tempting to us to make snap. It is tempting for us to make snap judgments about other people based on very little information. God is the only one who can truly judge hurts. Hearts, sorry, hearts. This doesn't mean we should compromise the nature of sin, but it does mean that we shouldn't claim to know the heart of a person. Tanging ang Diyos lamang ang nakakabasa ng puso ng bawat isa. And that will be revealed on Judgment Day. We must take a stand against immoral behaviors, but we should not be vicious, we should not be violent. We must do so with love and compassion. When we act in angry and hateful ways, you know, we give people the excuse to dismiss us because of our actions, not because of our explanations. Even though we are to be persistent and uncompromising, we are also to be loving and gentle, or we will tear out the wheat with the weeds. We have to be careful, brethren. I hope this church understands that. Tanging ang Diyos lamang ang nakakakita ng puso ng isang tao. Verses 28b, 29 reads, The slaves said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, while you are gathering up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Yes, we must confront heresy or the distortion of Christian truth. We need to speak up when a pastor, an elder, a church council member, a Bible study leader, Sunday school teacher, or denomination begins to drift from what the Bible teaches. But we must not become mean, abusive, even antagonistic in the process. You know, the devil can use our biblical concerns against us. If he can get us to use tactics to lead people to dismiss us and our concerns. Ano sabi ng Panginoon? Be wise as a... Serpent and what? Harm, harmless us, a dove. We must be discerning without being judgmental. Therefore, we must be careful of our attitudes. A judgmental attitude, my friends, takes joy in the fall of others, in the failures of others. It is a way of exalting ourselves by pulling others down. Though Christ calls us to be discerning, He doesn't give us the freedom to become heresy hunters, attacking every doctrinal or moral failure of others. Bakit? Lahat tayo may doctrinal error. Why? Personal sin affects the ability to always properly understand the Word of God. 
Kahit gano'n tayo kagaling, hindi po natin makikita lahat at sabihin natin, alam natin, tamang doctrine. Therefore, we must be gracious when others fail doctrinally and help them come to the truth. However, we must not tolerate heretical doctrinal errors that ultimately can be very damaging. Yung mga essentials. Yun, hindi tayo magko-compromise. Kagaya ni Paul, when it came to the gospel, Paul said that anybody who taught another gospel, what? Should be accursed. Condemned to hell. Listen, it is God who only changes hearts and lives. And we need to rest in His perfect timing and not try to make things happen in our own strength. In every circumstance, we are to show the love of Christ even when we disagree with other people. People, again, will need to see Christianity before they will listen to it. Satan will try to encourage us to do God's work in our strength. And when we succumb, succumb to that temptation, instead of advancing the kingdom of God, we will hinder the kingdom of God. But the last principle says we can remain calm. Bakit? Because the opposition will never remain forever. Will not remain forever. The delay in weeding the wheat was my friends, not to be mistaken. The owner had no intention of leaving the weeds with the wheat. Nakikita nyo? Sabi po dun sa verses 40 to 43, So just as the weeds are gathered up and burned with fire, so shall it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send forth His angels, and they will gather out his kingdom, out of his kingdom, all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their father. The one who has ears, let him hear. People make a fatal mistake when they take God's restraints. And see it as God's approval. But they also make an equally bad mistake when they conclude that since God hasn't judged sin, He is unable to do so. Brethren, the day is coming. God is waiting until judgment will no longer hurt those who are His. Who are, who are his. He is waiting for the appointed time. But that time is coming. I know the world does not like the biblical teaching of judgment and hell, but we must be clear that the Bible says a day of judgment is coming. There are many people who believe that everyone will go to heaven in the end, but that is not what Jesus taught. My friends, may naniniwala, pag tayo namatay, tapos na ang buhay. Wala na. But the resurrection of Jesus proves that that notion is false. Judgment is coming. Ano pong mga lessons natutu natutunan natin dito sa parable na to? First, we need to be alert. We must guard against false teaching. Satan has planted all sorts of weeds of deceit and falsehood in this world. And it is, if, it is easy for us to be led astray into ungodly beliefs and actions if we don't think critically, if we don't think biblically. We need to, be, we need to examine what we are being taught carefully. That means we should listen carefully to what pastors, to what Sunday school teachers, to what Bible study leaders teach to make sure it lines up with the Scripture but we must also realize that these are not only the places where we are taught. Marami po mga tao could influence our thinking and our beliefs. 
this d doesn't mean that we should become spiritual police, attacking and critiquing every little thing others say. But it does mean that we should listen carefully and check what others say against what the Bible says. But we do not only receive false teaching in the church. It is all around us. We need to learn critically about the TV shows, the movies that we watch, the books that we, re we, re we read, the websites we frequently visit. My friends, be discerning in the things you allow to influence you. If you do not guard against false teaching, it will quickly creep into your life with destructive consequences. Have you let your guard down? Are you developing an understanding of Christian beliefs? Are you spending enough time with the truth to enable you to recognize the error when it comes? Second, since God is patient, we should also be patient. Patience is not the same thing as tolerance. In our battle with evil, we must not forget that our methods are different from that of the world. We are to be like Jesus. We are to love our enemies in the confidence that that love will soften the hardness of the hearts of people. Are you trying to force things? Are you resorting to abuse, to intimidation, to manipulation, to try to bring God's, to try to bring about God's kingdom? Are you trying to harass a family member to believe? If so, repent of those tactics. We must place our confidence in God. We cannot make people believe. We cannot force people to live morally. We must show them the better way. We do this by reflecting the character of Jesus rather than adopting the methods of this world. And finally, the passage reminds us that someday we will stand before the holy God of the universe and give an account of our lives. We should carefully examine our lives, our hearts. The parable of the weeds reminds us that the wheat and the, the weeds are in the same field. They look similar. It is tempting to think that because we go to church every Sunday, we may even attend a growth group. We may even know all of the words to the choruses and the hymns that this church sings. You may even know a lot about Bible facts and say that you are the wheat. But just because you find yourself in the wheat field doesn't necessarily mean that you are a wheat. What I'm trying to say, my friends, there are many people who play the game of Christianity. They look, act, sound like Christians. They hang out with Christians. They may even convince people around them that they are Christians. But outward appearances can be deceiving. And God will not be fooled by our outward appearances. He will look at our hearts and ultimately... That will be the determining factor when the harvest comes. And so let us be honest with ourselves. Who or what are you seeking? Are you striving to draw closer to God? Or are you simply going through the motions? Are you pursuing the things of God or the things of this world? How you answer those questions will give you some insight into whether you are a wheat or a weed. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we shut our mouth before your word. How awesome is the teaching of your word. Help us to embrace it for Jesus' sake and ours. Amen and amen. As I've mentioned, today is the second Sunday. It's Communion Sunday. The Lord's Supper is a worshipful bringing to mind of the Lord Jesus Christ, a dramatized proclamation of the gospel. 
a reaffirmation of our fellowship and a foretaste of a victorious celebration that we're going to have when Christ comes again. If you have repented of your sins, trusted in Christ as your Savior, and submitted your life to His Lordship, you are welcome to partake of the table of the Lord. Ibig sabihin po, kahit member kayo o hindi member, pero tiyak nyo na tinanggap nyo si Jesus bilang inyong Panginoon, tagapagligtas, ay wini-welcome po namin kayo na makibahagi, makisama sa atin pong Lord's table. <clears throat> table. But let us take heed of the warning of God's Word. Therefore, whoever eats of the bread and drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. So at this juncture, may I request everyone to come to the Lord and confess of your sins to Him before you take the elements. I'll give you a minute. Thank you for the wonderful promise in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, as we take the bread representing your life that was broken for us and the wine representing your blood poured out from the cross, we remember and celebrate your faithfulness to us and to all who will receive you. Because of your body broken and your blood shed for us, we can be free from the power and penalty of sin. Thank you for your victory over death. You took the death that we deserve, and today we remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you gave us. Amen and amen. May, call, may I call on the deacons, the leaders, to help me distribute the elements.
For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us all partake of the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us all partake of the cup. Our loving Father, it's time we take communion May every one of us want to recommit our life, our heart, our thoughts, our everything to you. Would you fill us today with your powerful spirit as we leave this place? Help us, Lord, to hold this fresh remembrance and the story that never grows old close to our heart. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 to 10 says, and I read, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will, be, will brim over with new wine. The Apostle Paul instructed the, uh, the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Deuteronomy 16, 17 says, Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord God has blessed you. How has the Lord blessed you this week? If we give, can we even outgive God? By no means. But we are to support the work commissioned to us by our Lord, and you can do so by giving any amount, what you have decided in your heart to give, or as the Holy Spirit prompts you. You may direct your giving to the church bank account flashed in the screen, or give personally, which you could give during the announcements or after the service. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for blessing us with these material and financial blessings aside from all other blessings that you have revealed to us. Thank you for being faithful, even though we fail to also be faithful to you. We present to you our offerings in the amount that we have decided in our hearts to give. May this be used in the furtherance of your kingdom. We pray for wisdom for the administrators of this church and that we claim your promises, O Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain. Dalawang linggo na po bago yung ating concert no? para sa ating church anniversary. And uh, napakaganda no, ang mga bisita natin, puro mga awit, no? tama kakanta yung choir. And uh, we would like also to welcome 
our guests uh, this morning, uh, Miss Lizelle, Lizelle Chizel, Lizelle Handok here on the left, and also <laughs> Alisa Christine Salamia. And Welcome po and thank you for joining us. And we now go to our prayer huddle. So, pwede po tayong tumayo at pwede po bang uh, uh, pag-pray nyo rin, no? uh, si Rizel at saka si uh, Eliza. And look for someone to pray for. Hanap po kayo ng prayer partner. Jason, sama mo si Mark. Magtayo na kayong tatlo. So we have time. I'll give you five minutes. Two more minutes. Two more minutes.
One more minute. I request everyone to please rise. Let's close in prayer. Please don't forget to fill out the survey form for our anniversary. Okay, let's pray. Almighty Father, we, as we conclude this time of worship, we are grateful for the blessings received. And may the principles, the truths, Lord, that uh, we have learned today, May this guide us, Lord, in our actions. Would you grant us strength, love, and wisdom to serve others and give us the boldness, Lord, to share the gospel message. Lord, we pray for our students, especially college students who are taking the long exams this week and the coming days. We pray, Lord, for wisdom, guidance, strength. We pray for those who are traveling uh, out of town or out of the country. We pray for... Uh, traveling mercies, those celebrating their birthdays and couples celebrating their anniversaries, we thank you. Continue, Lord, to sustain them. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And amen.
puso y si lakas ay tanggapin o oh Diyos at kalugdan habang nabubuhay ika'y aking hahandugan ng pagsambang wagas itataas buong puso isipan at lakas pagkat ako'y umiibig sa'yo kalwalhatian mo ang buhay ko'y pagsamba muwagas itataas buong puso isipan at lakas ay tanggapin Ang nabubuhay, ika'y aking hahandugan ng pagsamba, wagas, itataas buong puso, isipan at lakas, pagkat ako'y umiibig sa'yo, kalwalhatian mo ang saysay ng buhay ko. God bless you po. See you next Sunday.